Hi guys, last year I travelled across Asia on an epic adventure to discover some of the most incredible and inspiring Asian baking recipes. Now, over the course of the next few weeks, I'm going to give you a little bit of a taste of the six different Asian countries I visited and all those great recipes. Hong Kong is the food city that doesn't sleep. There is so much to try. I am obsessed now with dim sum restaurants. I love that bustling environment to eat in. But one of my interesting experiences was in Matchbox Cafe, which is this sort of like 1950s style diner that serves up the strangest breakfast I've ever had. The city was under British rule until 1997, and 20 years on, there's a growing appetite for nostalgia. Cafe Matchbox is a reincarnation of the 50s style diner serving classic favourites with an odd Asian twist. Cafe owner and baker Gary Lee opened eight years ago as a passion project and a tribute to his childhood food memories. This cafe is just like an absolute dive into nostalgia. I love the decor and I love all the little elements you have around the around the place. Literally everywhere you look, there's there's moments of nostalgia. Ah, here we go. Here we go. You see? Oh my goodness! Thank you very much. See, see, see. Pane bubang with a big chunk of butter. That's an Irish style slab of butter. I love that. The Hong Kong government have declared pineapple buns a heritage recipe for the city. They don't actually contain any pineapple. The name comes from the pattern created by the egg and sugar topping. You actually spread the butter or do you just take a big no, bite out of it? Take a big bite of the chunk. <laughs> OK, I'm going in. Very nice. Very mm. nice. Uh. What's striking me is that this is all serious comfort food. I mean, you've got that lovely crunch, that buttery taste. And it's warm, it's, you know, it's a chewy, yeah. warm dough. I mean, I can see why people would come back for this. And this one, this is a piece of toast. Is it marmite yes. or what's the black stuff? Yes, it's a sesame seed plate. Sesame paste, paste. paste. Top you with the condensed milk. How's the taste? Actually, quite interesting. It's like tahini, it's almost like a tahini paste on top. It's got that really rich sweetness. You like the condensed milk? I quite like the condensed milk. Yeah. It adds a bit of sweetness. That you, you know, need. you know, you know. Back to the 70s, you know, because we don't. A lot of people is a worker. You know, they like, they like, they, they need a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. You know, condensed milk. You know, give them. You can give them more energy to work. You know? Okay, I'm sorry. There's another dish has just arrived. It, it looks like some sort of French toast, but it looks like it is French, a French toast. It is French toast. It is a French toast. A Hong Kong version of French toast. It is. So what I learned basically about Hong Kong is that food is a serious indulgence and there is no dessert more indulgent. In fact, I'm trying to position this as a breakfast food. So here is my Hong Kong style French toast. It's calorific, be warned. I would say one of the biggest surprises on my travels in Hong Kong was the breakfast. Hong Kongers are obsessed with completely over-the-top comfort foods. And that's exactly what I'm going to make for you now. This is a sort of brioche celebration toast filled with all sorts of wonderful goodness. I know this looks like an absolutely ridiculous piece of brioche, but this is Hong Kong style. So I'm going to take a very sharp knife and just run it into the center of this brioche, just to create a little pocket that I can stuff with peanut butter and some plum jam. And I'm just gonna pierce this all the way over. And doing this will ensure that that egg custard is gonna go all the way through. Now, this is definitely not food if you're on a diet. <laughs> this is absolute comfort food, and certainly something more for a dessert than a breakfast, I think. And now we have to do the slightly tricky job of shoveling in some peanut butter and some plum jam. So just gently spread that in. A good spoonful should do the trick. And then do exactly the same with that plum jam. And now it's time to be soaked in a beautiful egg and milk mixture. So I've got three large free range eggs going in here. And some full fat milk some vanilla extract, 
And just because we're kind of keeping that Asian theme going, I'm gonna add a little pinch of five spice in here. Just that little hint really does make a difference. And it's that point of difference that sets something like this completely apart. Okay, this is looking pretty good. So now it's time to soak this brioche loaf. But before I do, I wanna get my pan on nice and hot. And while that's coming up to temperature, we're gonna get soaking and making sure that it gets completely coated in all that eggy mixture. And allow it to soak through all those little holes you've created. Little butter in the pan alongside just a touch of oil to ensure that it doesn't burn. And just make sure you cook it until all that egg is cooked through. And look at that beautiful golden color. That is what it's all about. This is like no other French toast I've ever made before. To serve it up, I'm going classic Hong Kong style. I'm going with a little bit of condensed milk and just drizzle it straight from the can. Look at that. Pure, sweet indulgence. And what else would you put on a peanut butter and jelly filled brioche but a little bit of peanut butter ice cream? Now, it might not be a breakfast for one, but it is most certainly a dessert for two. I think you have to share. Right, let's tuck in and give this a go. It's gotta taste good. Oh, that is just utter indulgence. It is so good, and I think I'm gonna need to book myself into the gym after this, but this is the sort of thing that those people in Hong Kong were devouring, and, and I hope I've done them justice. There you go, a delicious recipe inspired by my epic Asian baking adventure. Now, if you like that, make sure you comment beneath letting me know if you're gonna try it. Hit that subscribe button, give me a like, and share this video. If you wanna see more of my Asian baking adventure, make sure to tune in to Good Food Channel for all 10 episodes. They're quite good. See you soon, goodbye.